thank you very much for your invitation and your friendly welcome. I'm very happy to be here. I'm a Saxon. I am from Saxony, from Dresden. And I'm happy to be invited to, to places without people going, shouting at me in rejection. From, um, someone who simply comes from such a totally different world. And uh, last night in the uh, Badisch Neueste Nachrichten, well, didn't uh, report, uh, but we had uh, received news from Klausens near uh, Dresden, which embarrassed me. And, uh, I don't uh, see it like a bagatelle, and let me tell you that I'm ashamed for what happened there. But it's no use, we need to think about how come it could happen, and how come that people become violent in such a way, and then we have to ask ourselves what we can do against this background. Second, and the most important thesis I want to present have been printed, so maybe I can be brief in presenting them. And uh, in the light of what we have already heard this morning, maybe I can make a few introductory remarks. First, regarding myself, I was born in 1960 in the German Democratic Republic in a state which does no longer exist. So, when I was 30 years of age, I experienced uh, that a state can fail completely and uh, then a new order is being built up and life goes on. Then I'm a theologist and I have my distance to politics, which in terms of perception dis dis uh, makes people different in the form of GDR. Uh, different from the Poles or the Czechs or the Hungarians who continue living in their own nation states, while the people in the GDR experience a kind of transformation which they can could only influence to a limited extent because the answers had all had already been given, which had some advantages, but regarding participation in the changes, it's something totally different. Third, I'm from Dresden, a city in which for about 14 months now, thousands have been meeting for an evening walk on Monday uh, regarding uh, Pegida. Uh, it has already been said that we need to define uh, notions which is also needed here. During the last uh, night walk there were 5,000 people participating and let me make the ironical remark that in Dresden 495,000 other citizens are living not going to Pegida. Hence, it's also a matter of perception. Where to localize these issues. Now, regarding the notion, what does the abbreviation mean? What does the full wording mean? Well, unfortunately, we couldn't hear this remark. The patriotic Europeans against the Islamization of the Orient. That's what it stands for. Well, we had uh, creations of words before in Germany, which offered something for everyone. Patriotic Europeans against the Islamization of the Orient. I don't want to indulge in a bad type uh, notions, but there was also a marketing expert who created an abbreviation which, uh, with, which within a few weeks and months uh, was being discussed everywhere, although people didn't really know what is included in it. Uh, that's a brand which you first need to position on the market of opinions. Mind you, Lutz Bachmann, that you may have heard this name before, I even met him personally, which I uh, didn't really need, but he was really a marketing expert, having something installed for each and every one. And of course, this attracted people to him. I'll 
try and explain this in a minute. Still another preliminary remark, having the, uh, had the opportunity to uh, be around in Offenburg during the Solomon talks and uh, to manage the discussion, and I realized that I have to observe the context, and I'm moving here in the south of the Federal Republic, uh, characterized by liberalism. And I don't even mean it in terms of uh, politics, uh, but in terms of history of mentality. I'm from a region in Germany where you cannot talk about um, uh, profound uh, liberalism. Uh, other things are explained by a totally different history of mentality of the East, for which I'm standing here, surprisingly enough, uh, having been extended. But uh, Saxony is kind of a microcosm of what we are experiencing in the Federal Republic in Europe, explaining many things. So if uh, the East has a characteristic trait, it's rather a state-oriented or a socialist or oriented uh, trade, hence an orientation towards um, uh, socialization and socialism. If you bear this in mind, maybe it's easier to understand some things. Last but one preliminary remark, education. That notion has already been mentioned in the morning. Everything is also not only, but also a matter of education. The Bologna process has already been mentioned in terms of a foe. Uh, I tell me one program of international students assessment, the PISA studies. Uh, we know who called them to life and who is driving them. Uh, they have been afloat for 15 years, taking a look look at certain things, comparing and measuring things. Now there's a special feature to the Saxonian school system, and we have always fared well uh, with uh, PISA all the while, uh, so people are clapping their shoulders, thinking the educational system is good. We organized a conference um, which PISA didn't measure, namely uh, cultural education, political, uh, ethical, aesthetic, uh, education, religious education, cultural education, and what have you. So, for quite a few years, more than a decade, it is not in the attention of the public, because something like a concept of education has gradually, creepingly changed, but um, some of the problems are also residing there, not only there, but also. Don't get me wrong. My last preliminary remark, and uh, well, uh, I'll be shown when my time is up. If we consider what happened in, uh, on Monday night in Dresden and elsewhere, uh, then uh, you can also see many Russian flags. Uh, the demonstrators uh, carry many Russian flags, sometimes uh, the German flag even is even interwoven with the colors of the Russian flag, which also shows a trace which we need to follow up in order to understand that phenomenon. Uh, a good friend of mine who is a German-Russian who has lived in Dresden for a long time, who told me that 80 percent of the demonstrators watch Russia today, and that is the most important information source in Russian language. And uh, they ask how come that the perception of the Ukraine crisis is so different in this light, uh, uh, and uh, that uh, this is also fed from that side. And of course, uh, Russian propaganda, even involving the f Russian foreign minister a card which is now played especially uh, something which is not at all surprising and this is also available in writing i've written it down and uh, you can read about it like about the pegida complex and the political culture of our country and i mainly refer to saxony first uh, i think this may appear a relief 
uh, namely uh, that I believe that Brigitte is an Eastern German, maybe even a Saxonian, and maybe even only a Dresden phenomenon. All attempts uh, to define and implant to Brigitte as an outgrowth of things which happen in Eastern German cities. And there were also uh, crazy people who thought that they could establish uh, similar things in other countries like Belgium or France, which didn't exist, and this can only be explained by this um, background in Eastern Germany and especially in Saxony. In terms of development, all of that started in October 2014 with a spontaneous demonstration on the Prager Straße in Dresden. Uh, and the first spontaneous demonstration against what? Well, against the German arms delivery against Curtis Schmerger. And uh, within a short period of time, a conglomerate of the most uh, various political problems uh, cropped up. There was a, a, a jam of uh, problems and sentiments which grew up under the roof of Pegida, of which no one really knew what it was all about. Most different things were expressed, the politic politicians are not in a position to solve the problems in a meaningful way, the lobbies are governing and ruling in reality, they are not in a position to control the finance markets or to channel the influx of refugees. We have a totally uh, diff uh, failing development policy, politics is acting from top to bottom, we are not involved at all and so on and so forth. And what I heard most in Dresden from Serious demonstrators, uh, people who were serious at the beginning of the demonstrations, was why are we not involved? We have the same feeling as in 1989 because those on top are doing what they want anyway. And that feeling was exploited by the marketing experts in such an excellent way that they used the symbolic capital uh, uh, saying on Monday night, we are the people and please no violence. The Eastern Germans in their democracy history link up with a pattern which they experienced successful in 1989 is something I don't take partly on a personal note, but that it was channeled, channeled in a direction which we cannot like, which has radicalized only knowing two decisive topics in a heretic way being presented, nam namely a German uh, anti-asylum uh, uh, politics and anti-Islam. Uh, well, up to January 2015, uh, the established uh, politics should have uh, 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 taken up these uh, topics and go into a dialogue with the people. Uh, but what happened in this time slot? Well, just the opposite happened namely just uh, blaming people, uh, which is not an apology, it's just meant as an explanation. The North Rhine Westphalian uh, Home Minister on the 10th and 11th of November of 2014 uh, already used the notion Nazis moving around in needle strip suits. The Federal Minister followed him up, shame on Germany, uh, shame on Estemir, this is Ms. Spok and Ms. Merkel in her New Year's Beach told about the cold and hatred of people which they carry along with them in their hearts. That was even worse than counterproductive. The organizers of Pegida couldn't be done anything better than these remote diagnoses. Uh, this reproaching uh, attitude. I um, don't want to po politize anything, but if we talk about the raw, the rough language in our social networks even, then we shouldn't uh, leave out of consideration the language our politicians, starting from a tone uh, which is picked up by so-called uh, simple people, people in the street. Let me now quickly uh, sketch uh, the decisive points contributing to this overall phenomenon. Well, as a root cause, 
I can see the drifting apart of social milieus. The decisive thing in Pegida is the drifting apart of the situation in rural areas and in big conurbations. Rural areas and uh, conurbations also exist elsewhere, but this is really striking in Saxony. Well, the problems of rural areas have hardly, hardly anything to do anymore with the big conurbations. I see the drifting apart of uh, people with strong and weak income, which is perhaps not totally correct. So let's rather call it stable and fragile income situations where people hardly have any understanding for other ones anymore, precarious working conditions. Uh, the young uh, generation and uh, their unemployment and the projected uh, poverty in age, which plays a decisive part. I see a big discrepancy between old and young people. Uh, many young people can handle problems around globalization much more easily than the elderly, and uh, they are already so exhausted by a process of 25 years of transformation, which makes it all the more difficult for them to get around uh, with the new, the recent um, developments. And in all these uh, demonstration activities, we call, can also see this as kind of an enragement an indignation, to put it in such a term, to couch it in such words. And uh, there are also many more men than women. It's a male-dominated phenomenon. Mind you, especially elderly men who then drag along young men and explain the world to them in their own ways. So there we need to dig deeper. Uh, lost uh, patterns of malehood. Uh, you may even uh, smile. I got an email from the state central from a young man in a rural area to the Polish border who wrote to me on a serious note, Mr. Richter, don't worry, I'll continue attending the Pegida demonstrations in a Monday afternoon until I find a shop and a wife. Well, in the east of Germany, at the border to Poland and to the Czech Republic, we have depopulated areas anyway, and the young women are the winners of our education system. All the indicators move up with young women, more flexible, more mobile, higher graduations, and please uh, don't take it too literally, but uh, we have a few villages uh, to the border of Poland or Czech Republic which functions like a um, flat-sharing uh, community of young men. Now, two remarks at the end of my speech, linking up what the last speaker said. Maybe it sounds strange to you right here. Back in 1989, it was not only a state which ended within a few months' time. It didn't even take a year before the GDR disappeared. But uh, a world outlook, a world philosophy also ended, namely that of Marxism Leninism. That world philosophy uh, was um, out of function anymore, because by that time everyone knew that Marxism-Leninism couldn't function anymore in terms of social policy, uh, and even less so in terms of economic functioning. But it was world outlook, a philosophy, and in that, according to that philosophy, there was an order in which uh, individuals found their places and in this order there were ideals which you could perhaps not achieve but there were ideals and there was a promised uh, protection from global threats and it even functions somehow. Now, uh, I'm a theologist and um, I take a look at uh, this, uh, and uh, the Eastern German uh, population is the most secularized uh, people of the world, maybe even, and as a, uh, they are not uh, available for resource in terms of world uh, philosophy or ethics. And uh, nationalism uh, makes use of this vacuum, uh, and it's a comfortable knowledge of orientation, knowing, well, it's great that you're a German, it's great that you belong to us, 
Hence, we indulge in defensive positions, we find new effects of belonging together, of ties, and after all these aberrations and distortions, we are worth something once again. That's my analysis. 25 years after German unification, 25 years, one full generation after 1990, in the east of Germany, something becomes visible. From the outside, everything seems to be re-established in an excellent way. You can show each and everything, go to Dresden, everything beautiful. The facade is okay, but part of the population, and uh, while well, talking about the questionability of Islam, uh, with which you cannot do much as a non-religious person, well, uh, uh, accepting such a situation rather than rejecting and saying that has nothing to do with us. And now my final remark, which I cannot spare you, because it belongs to a reality, namely that up to now that 80% of the functional elites in Saxony, in business, in administration, in culture and in the media, are people who came from Western Germany. Uh, well, please accept this compliment from me. Most of them uh, really meant it honestly, and they've really made a big effort for 25 years. In the ministries in Dresden, you hear a lot of Swabian accent. We've heard it for 25 years. Uh, but uh, many people of the autochthonous population, this means that there's an effect of alienation. Everything may be great, but people keep thinking this has nothing to do with us. And now a new alienation is flooding us after having believed there's a piece of stability. And now it's too much. One is the pheno image, the other one the root causes. If you want to tackle all of that, we need to uh, tackle the pheno image but the root causes, because uh, democracy is uh, competent enough to resolve the problems. I hope they will make it uh, at the moment, uh, although it still looks a little bit somber.